Test, test, test. Hello. Can you all hear us? Okay. Can you, good, good. Can right. you all hear us? Uh, I'm DeVaris Brown. Uh, I am the director of product for developer experience at Heroku. And I'm Felipe Navarro. I'm our lead CLI engineer. So if you've ever done Heroku anything, that's, yeah, and so that's where I we're live. Gonna, we're going to be talking. It's really, really hard to hear up here. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, anyway. But uh, we're going to be talking to you about going fast without breaking things, so how you can be innovative uh, and get your product and engineering set up right from the first day. So in this talk, we're going to give you a blueprint for how to identify and scope your opportunities. We're going to give you some best practices for how to create a minimal experience uh, that will provide a roadmap for future expansion. And we're also going to look at some engineering best practices for rapid innovation, minimal configuration. And then, in the spirit of startup grind, we're actually going to uh, start up a startup here on stage with a two-person product engineering team. Yeah. And so Felipe and I, we have a lot of experience doing this stuff. Uh, I've built and sold two startups. I IPO'd at another. And Felipe's crashed and burned at a couple, so we have... I've spent a lot of other people's money, yep. And I've crashed and burned at a couple, too, so we have a lot of great experience uh, to teach you all to help you not do those things or be successful if you want to. So, where do we start? Well, you start by figuring out what the opportunity is, right? Um, and assuming you know what your product space is, like, who are going to be the customers that are most likely to adopt? Because at the beginning, all you want to do is get feedback. You want to get feedback either from customers that vote from their dollars or they vote from their usage, all right? And so with this virtuous cycle of feedback, you're going to be constantly iterating. Um, and so those are the people that you want to target first. You don't want to boil the ocean out of the gate. Uh, the second thing is, is that you don't want to, to, to recreate the wheel. Again, you want to keep moving fast. So what do those customers actually expect, all right? If I'm building a social network, I don't have to do you know, many, many different things, right? I have to have likes, I gotta have comments, I gotta have messaging, right? Like, what do the customers expect from that audience and from that product surface area? Um, what are the competitors doing, right? So if I look at the competitive landscape of all the things, and you'll see when we build our startup later, uh, what are the competitors doing? What can we use from them to, to, to make our customers feel comfortable, feel safe, feel at home? So they're, they're more likely to adopt and pay at the end of the day. And then once you have all of that together, right, you have to create your product requirements. And we'll show you what that looks like. But essentially, it's like, what are the, the base requirements that are needed to satisfy all of the things above? And so you prioritize that customer base and their needs, and you're off to the races. So. How does one actually craft a proper experience? Well, using a product requirements document, right, which is basically the, the, the document that says, like, here's all the things that need to be done, um, you start brainstorming all the solutions. And so what a lot of people have done is, you know, they, there's a bunch of books that you can use, but me personally, in my kind of like wheelhouse, I use uh, the Google Design Sprint, right, and I think about all of the possibilities and all of the ways that I can satisfy my customer needs. Um, and then once I get there and you know, there's a bunch of little different activities that you can do, you settle in on one approach, right? And then that's what you go to market with. And so, you know, there's a couple of different things that you can talk about, like, you know, lean UX, wireframe, clickable prototypes and all that. The goal of it is to get something in front of your customers and get feedback very, very fast. Um, and so that way it can provides you a, a roadmap or some direction as to what you need to build. And like I said before, uh, don't, you don't have to recreate the wheel. So use established UX patterns, right? Um, a lot of people that I see, they, have, they go out and hire a designer. They take like five months to get a design. They're trying to get pixel perfect. Like, you don't have to do that, right? There are many, many, many like UI kits that are out there. Uh, I'll be honest, a couple of startups that I founded, the ones that I sold, I went to Dribble and Behance, and I looked up uh, you know, UI screens for things and then just kind of cobbled things together. Literally took me a couple weeks, and then I was off to the races in a month. Don't recreate the wheel. You don't have to 
you know, design a new slider. You don't have to design a new web form. People have already done that in spades, all right? Um, and then the last thing is never forget to delight the user. So while you can borrow and steal from other people, right, you have to have your secret sauce. You have to have your competitive advantage. Um, and that's what the, the delight portion is, right? Why is somebody going to adopt you over somebody else, all right? Because, you know, let's face it, there's a ton of startups here that do the same thing, right? Like if I say, how many people have a blockchain startup? A few people in here that do, right? You go in the next room, there's like 20 of them, right? So why are they going to choose you versus somebody else? Um, and so that customer delight, putting your, customer, your competitive advantage out ahead of, you know, the actual, like, you know, what the, uh, what the established patterns are, that's what people will choose to adopt you with. And so, once you have a product in the market, you have to validate what your assumptions are gonna be. And so that means, from beginning, you need to instrument and measure everything. Um, I've been a part of startups, I've been a part of large companies, that two, three years down the line, they wanna ask a question like, hey, how many people in, our, in, in Europe are actually using our product? Can't answer it. Why? Because they aren't measuring it, right? They didn't even think about measuring it. Uh, one of the questions <laughs> the other day uh, I was asking some of our team was like, hey, how many people use a particular feature that are paying for it? Well, we don't know because we aren't measuring it, right? You never want to be in that, in that situation. How can you judge the success or failure of a product when you're not measuring things? So just measure everything at the beginning. Um, another way to quickly, to quickly validate your assumptions is to create a landing page, right? Um, it takes very, very minimal amounts of capital, very, very minimal amounts of infrastructure to throw up a landing page. Felipe and I did it in, what, five minutes, like right before this talk, um, to capture signups, right? To see if people will actually resonate with what your product is. The third thing is, uh, we say, process over platform, right? And so one of the things that I see a lot of people do in, in the early startup phase is that they go out, you know, they sign up for AWS, get a whole bunch of credits, you know, they're building Kubernetes this, Docker this, all this other stuff. But you ask them like, okay, how does a user actually sign up <laughs> for, your, for your product? They have no idea because they haven't actually figured out what the process is, but they've started building everything super fast, right? And that's something where, you know, again, it's process over platform. As soon as you get the process down, you'll start seeing points where you should start automating and points where you should start, uh, you know, building a platform to support and help you scale. And then the last thing, you know, to do to validate your assumptions is that, again, as you're rapidly iterating, you want to get feedback. You want to be able to, to have your users tell you what they like, what they don't like, uh, because that's what's going to help them keep paying and that's what's gonna turn them into evangelists to help sell on your behalf. So you have to have very, very visible feedback channels, right? So I saw the guy from Intercom on here. Like, you know, a lot of places have that little bubble on the side of your screen. Uh, when you go to the website, use that, right? Make sure that people can see what your support email is. Use Zendesk, right? Like all these things that allow you, uh, allow your customers to, to provide feedback and it gives you an easy way for you to respond. So. Yeah, so let's hop over to some engineering best practices. You'll see a common theme here, which is that you should spend your time, as Devar said, concentrating on your secret sauce early on and not reinventing engineering wheels and engineering best practices um, for something that is very likely going to change down the road. So point number one, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, also, um, just because there's a new hip popular technology out there doesn't need mean you need to be an early adopter as a startup, okay? Use well-known web frameworks to get you off the ground and running. Uh, you, you want these things, they're documented well, they're supported well, they're tested well, and likewise, they also provide a good testing framework, which we'll go into uh, another point later. Um, also, if it's a, a large, well-known framework, you can likely hire for it down the road. Uh, it's really kind of interesting to watch people build in technologies um, because you know they knew a person who did that, and then when it comes time to scale, no one else knows that language or that framework. So building a technology you can hire for. All right, 
And then think API first. And what I mean by this is, uh, as Devaris was sort of talking about uh, getting a lot of UX and stuff right, <clears throat> hopping more into the core engineering, um, you want to think about designing uh, your API um, in such a way that you get your data model right, because that's going to be the hardest thing to change going forward. Uh, data, right, is actually the bread and butter of your business. Data on top of an experience, or uh, or, or data leveraged through an experience. So spend a lot of time getting your data model right. You can work a lot later twixing, or tweaking pixels and things like that. Data models are really tough to change. So spend some time getting that right. Always be testing. A lot of early founders will make, I think, a Faustian bargain to change, to not test and spend more time building. It's going to bite you later on. You don't have to go overboard in testing, but your engineering team, or you as the engineer, should be testing from day one. Also, that builds into your CI cycle, which we'll go into in a little bit later. Then, this might be a little controversial. Um, start with mobile responsive before going native. Unless your product does, uh, explicitly needs to be native first, um, start mobile responsive. Uh, you get a lot more leverage that way. And then once you actually kind of know that product market fit and stuff like that, you can decide what you, need, what, what you want to build natively. Because the moment you go native, now you have three engineers. You've got your full stack engineer, um, your Android engineer, and your iOS engineer. Maybe they're the same person if you're lucky. Um, but start, start mobile responsive before native, unless you have a, a really good reason. And then uh, when you go API first, and you have done some product market fit, uh, you've already got your API ready for that client. So you don't have to do any sort of uh, uh, spend any time then converting your, your uh, web app back to an API. Awesome. And then um, you should set up your dev to product production workflow from day one. <clears throat> Meaning on your first commit, um, it should go through uh, a CI process that runs your tests that you're writing, and then uh, ideally automatically deploys to production. This gets you in the habit of continuous release and starts to build, hopefully, trust in your release process um, so that you're not holding up releases. Uh, you're, uh, and then uh, as you add on more engineers, the process is pretty simple. When things get merged to master after appropriate testing and PR review, PR review they end up in production. So start that from commit number one. Awesome. And then <clears throat> with proper CI setup, you can continue to iterate with confidence if you're testing. So you're testing, you're covering yourself, and things go immediately into production. So you can start growing without having to, uh, uh, well, with some confidence. Bugs do happen. But um, with that CI pipeline set, uh, you're in a really good spot. So Felipe and I were like, yeah, that was cool for like 10 slides to understand like kind of at a high level what you should do but uh, we figured like we can kind of walk through what our process would be to build something uh, we'll build in front of you all so that you can get an idea of what this would look like from a product perspective if we're a two-person founder of course I would be the CEO because of my dashing good looks and humor uh, and Felipe would be the CTO uh, and so if you want to go to like getmobilized.io, we built this wonderful landing page for you uh, for this conference. Uh, but we're going to build an MVP right now. So what's Mobilize? It is a logistics hub for field marketing teams, all right? And so if you all have ever done an event, it's always this like hodgepodge of Google Sheets, Google Docs, Excel, Word, PowerPoints, text, Slack, all of these things, all right, email, SMS. And so it's one of those things where it's kind of like, look, we just need to know what time we need to show up so that we can come and give this wonderful talk. Uh, and literally, because you know our phone, our work-sponsored phone plan sometimes doesn't cover the EU, uh, we would like to have a one-stop hub where we can get all this information for people. Uh, and so first thing that we thought about was like, who would actually use this? Um, so companies literally throw events all the time, right? If you think about companies at meetups, companies at startup grind, they need to coordinate who's going to be there, what are you going to talk about, what vendors you need to use, all these wonderful things. 
So this is for people who actually work and they organize in-person marketing events. Uh, and then the actual user would be the employee working the event. One of the things in startup land that people don't, they don't usually notice the nuance. Your customers and your users are usually two different people, right? The person who's buying is not the person who's actually gonna be consuming. So making that distinction up front and making sure that you have the personas and what they actually expect are actually, you know, that's gonna help drive the business forward. So identifying that sooner rather than later is probably a good thing. So, first version, right? And so, go back, there we go. Uh, first version, we have to think about what are the things that are actually gonna make somebody adopt this, right? And so we could do all three versions of this software all at once, take about six months and you know, get, get everything all polished up for everyone. But, uh, you know, in the, in the vein of moving fast and iterating and getting feedback and lean startup and all those books that you get, you know, you see in, on Amazon and on Medium articles, we're going to actually do a roadmap. And so in the first version, or V0, uh, we're going to have an API that powers our web interface, right? Not doing the mobile app, we're going to do a web interface because that gives us the ability to hire people that are less specialized, right? Um, and, it, and the API allows us to, to say, hey, if this is successful in V0, we can actually go do a mobile app, as Felipe said. Uh, and then the second thing is, is like there's going to be an offline mobile experience for event workers, right? And so, you know, go to getmobilized.io. Uh, eventually, you'll see a button there that says, hey, download this. You know, if you go there from your mobile app, you can, I mean, your mobile phone, you can actually like download the icon. Uh, and then that gives us the ability to rapidly test and iterate. Um, and so we'll have the ability for you to add flight info, hotels, dress code, booth hours, all that fun stuff. Um, and then it's after the event, right? And so this is the thing that's a big issue for us is that we need to collect feedback after the event. So uh, how do you get 20 workers to actually like send you stuff back? Well, we're gonna send you a push notification. Let's say it's successful. Right now, companies are actually using it. What are the the features that we're going to go to next? Right, and so instead of you signing up just like with a random Gmail, we're going to add SSO, uh, which means single sign-on. So if I'm at you know startupgrind.com, I can just go in there and sign up, and everybody in my organization can get access to it. Uh, we can partner with an event management vendor. Right, so now instead of us just you know getting the logistics, when somebody visits our booth, we can actually you know take their information and all that good stuff, talk to them. Uh, we can set goals and metrics, that type of thing. Um, and then the last thing is like, we can do expense management. I hate doing expenses after <laughs> events. I don't know about you all, how many of you all traveled to be here? Yeah, if you're here on the company dime, like actually submitting expenses is one of the things that I hate like with, with every fiber of my being. Uh, but you know, make it easy for people to do it. Um, and then the other thing is, is like, if you do events, Especially for me, as you all can tell, I'm from the States. I have a bit of an accent. Uh, I get to travel to London for free. Uh, but a lot of times when you say, hey, there's, a, there's an event in London, tons of people will sign up or they want to go. But how do you know they're actually going to be good to go, right? And so one of the things that, you know, you have all this data since we've been tracking from day one, uh, you can start using machine learning to, to identify people who are actually be the most effective at a particular event, right? Um, and that's something that, you know, be, remember I said customer delight? I don't think anybody out there is doing that. And by the way, when you're going out and raising money, you got to start using buzzwords, right? So I had to throw machine learning on the slide. So what is the user journey going to be? For the first thing, you're going to log into a web UI. You got to be able to create an event, add event details, and add event workers. Just a big web form in the sky. Uh, and then on the, and that's for the admin side. On the worker side, once you get, once you've been added, you'll receive an invite. You can log into the, to the web UI, finish the profiles. You can add event details. And then once the event is done, you'll actually be able to, to receive updates to say, you know, things have changed. So again, what are we going to be measuring, right? And some of this stuff is like basic SaaS math, right? Like you got to, you know, figure out what customer satisfaction is. You got to understand number of customers, revenue, like what's, what's my customer acquisition, all that good stuff, right? Um, but then you want to track engagement, right? Like how many events have been created per month? 
how many recaps have been sent, right? Um, and then once we go to V1, how many people are using SSO versus just a regular login, right? Because that gives you the saturation of, of your corporate customers, your enterprise customers, all right? Uh, how many people have actually integrated Mobilize with their event management platform? Uh, how many number of customers are actually the percentage of customers that are using the goal features, right? Like, so you want to start tracking feature adoption, engagement, that type of thing. Because when you go out and raise money, they're going to ask you these types of things like free versus paid, enterprise versus, you know, general, that type of thing. So. All right. So we'll quickly get through the engineering here. Uh, V0 uh, probably looks something like a Rails app. Push to Heroku if you're so inclined. Uh, right where we have our API and our GUI, our web and worker dynos. And then with a platform like ours at Heroku, we can easily add our database, uh, our queuing service, error monitoring, analytics. Uh, sort of uh, MVP of analytics is just measure average and max, let you know what the average experience is, and then you want to see outliers. And then again, get that CI set up, that continuous integration, which auto deploys. Then in V1, we can move something to like a pipeline service so we can have a staging, uh, staging to production uh, pipeline. Uh, you could even throw QA in there. Um, and then uh, if you're on GitHub, we could throw in some GitHub webhooks. So now we have a real automatic process. Um, and then also, since our company is growing now at V1, we're going to scale up our web workers. Then something like V2, when we're really firing, uh, we can do some auto scaling because we know that uh, we don't need to have tons of servers on in the middle of the night. Uh, we can do it right before event time or during the event, so we'll do some auto scaling. Uh, likewise, Heroku, we have a product called Data Clips that allows management to run queries against the database so they don't have to bug engineers to do that. And then beyond, we'll build that mobile app. We'll get into enterprise um, solutions, things like that. So, so in recap, the thing that you have to understand is that you, who's your paying audience and pri prioritize their needs for the initial experience. Um, deliver on the parity items, but make sure that you have a customer delight, right? Um, that's your competitive advantage. And then make sure that you measure everything. Um, please don't reinvent the wheel. You can do that later, but make sure you deliver on the first, your initial value proposition. Right, and engineering, um, remember your job is to support product. So get your infrastructure set up right from day one and then spend your time engineering your product instead of engineering your infrastructure. Um, and then lastly, um, with uh, appropriate platforms and stuff like that, your infrastructure can scale uh, from zero to 1,000, 1 million and beyond. Cool, so thank you. Check us out, getmobilized.io. Uh, I think we're taking questions, right? Yeah, I don't know. The, there's a big red blinking Was sign. Was that the there. questions timer? Or the, yeah, yeah, I don't no, know. No man. questions? We'll, nope. Somebody will come we'll, pull us off stage. <laughs> All right. We'll, so we'll we got questions. We got a, well, first question. What would your advice be in regards to tech debt? How sensitive should early startups be towards it? You want to start or you want me to go? Fire away. All right. So you're always going to have tech debt. Every startup goes through the big rewrite at some point. Uh, the way that you mitigate that is being API first, right? And so if you get the, the, the actual API contracts and the data models right up front, the underlying tech itself, that's going to change. Every single startup has had to do a big rewrite. There's no way to get around that. The only way that you can minimize tech debt is being API first and documentation. Yeah, and think flexibility in your engineering. Uh, there's a lot of people who want to, you know, uh, principle dry, not repeat yourself. Flexibility should be your main principle early on. You want to be able to extend your product easily more than anything else. Cool. Thank you. Come check us Thank out at the yeah, we'll, booth. We'll be floating around. We're all Feel here. Ask us more questions. Thank you.